Hi, my name is Peter Paul and I want to share with you the one thing I did to fix my social dilemma. If you've recently watched the documentary The Social Dilemma, then you're aware well of this problem we're all faced with. Have you ever wondered why an item you were searching for online or even talking about magically appears on all your social media feeds? Or how when you watch one video on your feed, another similar video automatically plays? And before you know it, three hours have gone by. How about when you're scrolling through your social media feed? Have you ever noticed that it never stops? There is no finish line. It doesn't stop because it's not supposed to stop. Our social media feeds are designed to control our behavior and to hold our attention as long as possible. And it's pretty good at doing it too. From what we do to what we buy, to where we go, even who we vote for, social media has the power to influence all of that. So while social media's original intention of connecting others was good, it has taken a drastic turn for the worse. So we can run away and tell everyone how bad social media is, but unless we take action and actually do something about it, we're never going to get away. What did I do to break free from my social media dilemma? Just for context, I used to be very addicted to social media. I was on my phone a lot. And when I say a lot, I mean a lot. And I didn't know it at the time, but I was addicted. And there's two quotes. One says, you don't know what you don't know. Or the other quote is, addicts don't know they're addicts. So at the time, I didn't know I was addicted to social media. I just couldn't stop using it. So how do we solve it? Or how did I solve it? Well, when faced with the problem, I think the best thing to do is to identify why we have the problem. Find the cause. Why are people addicted to social media? So from my research, I found that most social media addiction comes from three things. The first one is social validation. It feels good to be connected to each other. When people recognize and acknowledge us, we feel good or validated. We feel that we matter. Unfortunately, the opposite is more likely. If we feel good when other people like our posts, then what happens when they don't? Next is FOMO, the fear of missing out. Humans are tribal creatures, and in the past, the only way to survive was to be part of a tribe. Our survival depended on being part of a group or belonging to a group. But how many people should be in a group? There's a theory called Dunbar's Rule that states we can only maintain 150 social connections. And with social media, we have an artificial tribe made of hundreds of people, and it's impossible to maintain those relationships. Lastly, we have brain chemistry. A Harvard study showed social disclosure on social media platforms light up the areas of the brain that also light up when taking addictive substances, like cocaine. Yes, social media is cocaine for the brain. No, this is obviously not cocaine. So we've identified why people become addicted to social media. Social validation, FOMO, and brain chemistry. So what did I do to address these three issues? and fix my social media dilemma? Well, I fixed it with one rule. I actually made this rule after deleting my social media and flying to Vietnam a year and a half ago. The rule is wait till eight. I'll say that again, wait till eight. That means from the moment I wake up until 8 p.m., I do not use my phone for social media. I actually barely use my phone. That means no Instagram, no Facebook, no YouTube, no TikTok, no Snapchat, no whatever else the cool kids are using nowadays. So why 8 p.m.? Because that's when my day usually finishes or usually winds down. How does wait till 8 address these three issues? For social validation, with wait till 8, since I can't use my social media for social validation, I have to get it from actual interactions with other people. I know, this is definitely different from what I was used to doing before. Here's a real example. When I used to be a teacher, during lunch, I would go on my phone and scroll through social. Then I would wonder why I didn't have that much to talk about with my coworkers. Because of wait till eight, I actually stopped bringing my phone to lunch. And guess what? If I wanted to socialize, I'd actually have to talk to someone beside me and it made lunch actually fun and social. 
And it, it didn't mean that every day was guaranteed to be filled with great conversations, but not having my phone on me meant that I was creating opportunities for those conversations to happen. It's hard to talk to someone when there's a phone blocked in their face. And this really helped me with my marriage too. So before Wait Till Late, every time I was out with my wife, I'd be making an Instagram live video, a Snapchat, or posting a picture or video. And this meant I was taking attention away from my wife and what was happening around me. But because of Wait Till Eight, every date, every meal, every walk, every drive, guess who has my attention? My wife. But when eight o'clock hits, I just completely ignore her. I'm just joking. Also, before Wait Till Eight, I would check my posts constantly to see how many likes or views I got for that sweet, sweet social validation. After Wait Till Eight, if I wanted to be happy, I have to actually do something that makes me happy. Whether it's hang out with my wife, call a friend, go work out, go run, meditate, or even make a video, or even just look around and be present. Number two, FOMO. So before Wait Till Eight, I wanted to know what everyone was up to, from people I actually knew to acquaintances, random celebrities, and athletes. After Wait Till Eight, if I wanted to know what a friend was doing, I'd actually have to message them. And it actually improved our relationship because instead of creeping on their profile, I just spoke to them. My question is, how is it possible to have more than 50 friends? If you think about it, if you have more than 50 friends, you never have any weekends to yourself because you'd always be at someone's birthday or wedding or anniversary. And if they have kids, then that's like times five. The wait till eight rule really helped me to rethink what a relationship was. It used to be about looking through someone's profile now, it's about actually having a relationship with them. And contrary to social media, I actually prefer having a small group of quality relationships than a couple hundred followers. So wanna know what happened when I stopped keeping up with random celebrities and influencers? Life went on. Wanna know why? Because there's no relationship there. They don't know I exist, so they'll continue living their life. And I'll have more time to live mine because I stopped watching theirs. Does that make sense? And I still follow a handful of popular accounts because I think they're inspiring or funny or they just post funny memes. Number three, brain chemistry. So since social media is like a drug for your brain, we need to realize that we're gonna have some withdrawals. So since I couldn't check social all the time, I began to check my email a lot. I've never been so excited to just go through my junk mail, but that got old really fast. And since I wasn't always holding onto my phone, I didn't know what to do with my hands because I was so used to holding my phone as a safety blanket like most of my life. I've been doing Wait Till 8 for almost a year and a half now and I can honestly say it's changed my life for the better. From my health to my relationships, even creatively. I have more time to pursue things that I've always wanted to do or that I was always distracted from. And of course, I have my days where I don't follow the rule. Is it the perfect rule? No. When TikTok first came out, it was not good for my rule. I don't know how or why, but it would start off very intentional, like looking at personal development stuff, finance stuff, funny stuff, and without fail, it would turn into me watching videos of street vendors from India and places in Asia just making street food or people making stuff like glass, mechanical objects that I never knew existed. It was a weird rabbit hole. I don't know what to say. I stick to my rule. I would not open TikTok till 8 or 9 p.m. And before I knew it, it was 2 a.m. And that happened for like three days in a row. Okay, maybe like two weeks in a row. There was no rule to fix that. I just had to delete TikTok. Maybe that's the rule, delete TikTok. Is social media addiction something that you are struggling with? If not, then you are lying. <laughs> just joking. If you're not addicted to it, then I'd love to know how you did it. Um, if you are addicted to social media, then maybe the wait till eight rule might be a rule you can use. Maybe try it for a day or even a week and just see what happens. Anyways, that's it for me. If you've gotten this far in the video, then thank you for watching. Let me know what you like or you didn't like about the video in the comments below. I promise to respond to all of them because I don't get a lot of comments. And if you've enjoyed the video, consider subscribing or hitting the like button because I'm a hypocrite and I'd like to use the YouTube algorithms to show you more videos of the future. I'm not joking. Um, I'm Peter Paul and I'll see you in the next one.